The Nate Ukes women's volleyball team faced off against the Augustana Vikings last Saturday here at home. And after beating them on Friday three sets to nothing, the Ukes are looking to keep up the momentum. With Nate in the yellow up 3-0, Jamie Bain serves it to Vikings' Kiana Ma. The ball is set for Lauren Van Dyke, who hits it deep, but Victoria Johnstone is there to keep it alive. Milani Stang is able to put it over, and Rebecca Bates is unable to get there. Oops are up 4-0 now. Vikings again, Jamie Bain again with the serve to Kiana Ma, who places it nicely, and Bates spikes it over the net. Johnstone is able to set it up for Jocelyn Peters on the outside, who hits it over. Nicole Brockman then sends, sets it behind her to Ray Matrunik, who places it in center court, and the Vikings are on the board. Later in the first, Nate winning 18-16, Jillian Samko with the serve. Jamie Bain sets it up to Alexis Anderson, who puts it over. Vikings scrambles, but are unable to save it. Dukes will win that set 25-21. They will go on to win the next two sets as well. Coach Henrix was impressed with his team's performance. Yeah, I was really happy with uh, our consistency. So we limited the errors. Uh, by far our best uh, weekend of the year as far as unforced errors, so uh, something to build on for sure. The second game of the doubleheader featured the Nate men's team against Augustana. Losing a close one the night before, the Oos were looking for redemption. Oos in the yellow, Vikings have an early lead of 4-2. Devin Klein serves it up, Gary Bacart with a big touch here, and Ben Onishuk puts it down to make it a bit closer. Later on in the first, Oos leads 17-11. Danny Martin with the serve, and Ben Onishuk is unable to handle it. Fast forward a bit and the Vikings are making it close. The score now 24 to 23 for Nate. Reese Fingus with the serve and Mitch Lewington gets the pass and sets it up for Spencer Fisher, who then hits it deep and gets the point. On to the third set, Ooks up by one. Patrick Mate with the serve, Mitch Lewington sets it up then for Devin Klein. However, with a big block here by Lyndon Varga, the Vikings tie it up, but they won't be able to score again after that. The Ooks take that set 26 to 24. Ooks libero Isaiah Stein had a 100% kill percentage on the night and says his team was able to focus and bounce back from their close loss the night before. Close loss yesterday, we kind of just tried to uh, battle back and stay focused on what we need to deal with tonight. And I feel like we just uh, dug in, um, had what we needed to do in mind and uh, did that well. With an Eskimo loss last week, there will not be a Battle of Alberta Grey Cup this year. Instead, the Ottawa Red Blacks and Calgary Stampeders will face off at the BMO Field in Toronto tomorrow. Ottawa could be facing an uphill battle in this matchup. They did not beat Calgary once in the regular season game all year. We asked our Twitter followers what they thought, and 62% think that Calgary will be the winner tomorrow. If you were watching the MLS playoffs on Tuesday, you might have recognized one of the players. Toussaint Ricketts was born and raised in Edmonton and is now playing forward for the Toronto FC. Officially signed in July, Toussaint has scored four goals since for the Toronto FC. And in the playoff game, got an assist. When Toussaint was a teenager, Sean Fleming was his coach at the National Training Centre. And while things weren't always easy, Sean says he's proud of what Toussaint has accomplished. Him and I were sitting here together. He'd say that you know, we had a little bit of uh, attitude adjustment in terms of his training habits, in terms of his commitment to what he should be doing. And so, but all credit to him. Like, as sometimes as a coach and athlete have, there's some uh, tense moments, and I would say that Toss and I did have our tense moments, but uh, he was uh, absolutely tremendous so, on how he did it and how he improved in such a short time. If you want to see Toussaint in action, his next game is against the Montreal Impact on November 30th. This week for the Enzo Challenge, I decided to try my hand at shooting some pucks. from the Nate Men's Hockey Team, and he's going to teach me how to shoot a hockey puck today. So what's first? Wrist shot. Okay. Okay. I line you up. So in a wrist shot, I learned this when I was maybe four years old, but it's always heel to toe. So you start on your heel, okay. and make sure when you're done, it goes off your toe, and wherever you point, that's where the puck should go, obviously. But uh, so it's just like that. Heel to toe, and you should be able to get it off the ice like that. You can try yourself. <laughs> That's actually not bad. I mean, you lean into it. Like, okay. don't, yeah, don't stand straight up. Try to lean into it a bit. Okay. Finish point. Okay. There it is. That's nice. Start on your backhand. Okay. And you want, you want the spin almost. So you want that like feeling of when it's spinning. Yeah, it's just like that. <laughs> okay. But yeah. Same thing. Okay. This hand up there. Okay. That hand. Yeah. So that'll okay. get right to the puck. Okay. And, and then... fire. <laughs> Before you go. Just load up, 
and Get. then just point, point your toe. So on a slap shot, there's no real, you don't have to heal the toe Kay. anywhere you want to hit it. And just keep, try not, try not to do that. Kay. Keep your blade down. Okay. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Trace, for teaching me how to shoot. I don't think I'll be joining a hockey team anytime soon, though. No, right. well, I mean, it's not the easiest thing, but it's my pleasure to help you, so whatever works, thanks. Thanks, guys. I'm sure glad I didn't have to do that on skates, otherwise I would have been on the ground the entire time. You know what, Angie, I think you should stick to just talking about hockey instead of playing it. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to agree. Yeah, I think I'll put my hockey stick <laughs> away for now. Thanks, guys.